name is Katie Lowe, and welcome to another Chocolate in Review. Our chocolate today, the highly anticipated Peruvian National 70% by Soma Chocolate out of Toronto, Canada. I'm so excited! I'm really excited. I'm obviously So, before we talk about today's chocolate, let's talk a little bit about the kinds of beans that make up chocolate. There's three major kinds. There's Criollo, Forestero, and Trinitario. We're going to talk about Criollo first. Criollo is um, it's native to Mexico and Guatemala. To the best of our knowledge, it is a fine flavor bean. It's usually very delicate, has lots of nuances. You remember when all those critics say, oh, I taste mushroom and oak moss and things like, you know, like weird things that you'd never associate with chocolate, it's usually Criollo beans they're tasting because there's all kinds of beautiful nuances, all kinds of very sensitive flavors in these kinds of chocolates that you wouldn't try anywhere else. It's, it, it's always a delight to try a really good Criollo bar. The next major kind is Forestero, and it's native to Brazil. Again, this is all to the best of our knowledge, so, you know, be very careful with this. We're still discovering the life of chocolate. Forestero is the most popular chocolate grown in the world today because it's very hardy, it transports well, you get a much bigger yield than you do with Criollo. However, it usually doesn't taste as good. There are some fine flavor um, Forestero beans. Ecuadorian Ariba and this guy, our Peruvian Nacional, both fall under a Forestero with very high flavor profiles. A really good Arriba is an amazing experience. The third kind is Trinitario, and it's the grafting of Criollo branches onto a Forestero trunk. The story goes, there was a hurricane and it wiped out the entire, um, the entire, um, an entire plantation, and a Jesuit priest had this great idea to graft the, the two trees together. In theory, you get the hardiness of a Forestero tree and the yield with the delicate flavor of a Criollo. The truth is a lot more complicated. <laughs> the truth is, it's a beautiful crapshoot with Trinitario. You never quite know what you're going to get. It makes it really exciting. Today's chocolate is a Peruvian Nacional. This is from Soma Chocolate. It is my favorite chocolatier in Canada. My absolute all-time favorite. I've been following these guys since 2005. They were established in 2004 and it was very difficult to get their chocolate in the United States until very recently because of importation and immigration and things like that. But you can do it now. I'm very very excited to be able to share this today. Want to try it? Of course you do. It's beautiful! Look at that! It's incised with these gorgeous uh, cacao plants. Although it's got the cocoa pods and the flowers. You get little birds in there. Soma has always paid a great deal of attention to the entire process of enjoying chocolate. And it's always a, a true delight to try one of their works, especially one I've never had before. So the gloss. Now, I got this bar mail order on a, on a day where it hit 90 degrees. <laughs> That is not good for chocolate! So the gloss is a little off, I'll be honest with you, but you still see elements of it. You still see where it was there. It looks a lot like a frosted window pane right now. The color? This is very lovely. It is a rich and embracing brown. It is indulgent brown. It's 1970s Barcalonger brown. Let's try break. Nice. It's a well-defined break. It's not really quiet. It's not mushy. There's no air bubbles. 
gentle as it goes. Fragrance. Next thing we gotta try. It smells like the perfume counter at the Macy's in downtown Philadelphia, which is the biggest Macy's I've been to. I know there's one in New York. I'm sure it's bigger. Please, please send me to New York so I can go there. Let's go with mouthfeel. What does it feel like in your mouth? Like butter. What's it taste like? This is always the number one marker of a really good chocolate. What does it taste like? Opening notes of caramel. It's like a campfire. Mulberry. Plum. And a finish of of wood incense, like a, not not a sandalwood, more like a cedar wood. It's 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 dense, but it's clean. And each one of these flavors is fairly well defined, luxuriant. So, who would I recommend this chocolate for? Well, chocolate is an adventure. Chocolate is one of those things that you embark on, not because you're bored or because you like candy. You do it because you really want to do something different. This chocolate is one of those that takes you places. It's, it's, it's got a story to tell. It's October. It's a weekend in October, probably the second weekend. It's a Saturday night. It's 10 p.m. You're sitting in front of the campfire with all your besties. It's a little chilly, so you got your coat on and you're huddled all with your buddies all around you. you got the campfire going. And it gets a little tiny wood chips smoking in the air. It smells like hickory. And you're about to tell spooky stories. And you're drinking hot cocoa. Not, not the cheap hot cocoa. The good stuff. You're drinking Taza. As the leaves continue to fall down and the wood, um, the wood ash continues to kick up. These little tiny sparks. And it's going to be a marvelous night no matter what happens from here on out. Highly highly recommend it. It was amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. This is KT Lowe reminding you that there is only one flavor in the world and that flavor is chocolate. Thanks for joining me for Chocolate in Review.